Tennessee Titans vs. Skull Nation coming at you right after the book. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. If it's your first time checking it out, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe below. Once you hit that subscribe button, you get put into the free Corey Davis jersey giveaway. We'll get that out to you as soon as we hit that 500 follower marker, guys. But today we're covering the Minnesota Vikings and Skull Nation versus the Tennessee Titans. Another week, another preview. These are two teams that are very different off the spectrum as far as the season's gone so far. The Minnesota Vikings coming in at 0-2. The Tennessee Titans are undefeated at 2-0. But both of these teams are very similar. But let's go on into the breakdown. So both of these teams love pounding the rock, and that's something they'll both find success in this upcoming week, I believe. The Tennessee Titans are giving up an abysmal 5.1 yards per carry, which they have to fix. They're just not meshing well together thus far, and we see the talent. Maybe they put it together this week, but Dalvin Cook's going to get his. But on the other side of the ball, the Minnesota Vikings are giving up a 4.3 yard per carry, which isn't great by any means, but it's better than the Titans. But they just lost Anthony Barr for the season, which is a big hit on that defense. So both of these rushing games should have a big day. So the biggest difference in these two teams thus far this season has been the turnover margin. The Tennessee Titans are sitting at a plus three advantage to where the Minnesota Vikings are at the negative three. So if the Vikings want to stay competitive in this game, they have to limit those turnovers and force some from the Titans who haven't had one all season thus far. So let's talk about the game. I think the Tennessee Titans have the advantage in this game, regardless if A.J. Brown does or does not play. The Minnesota Vikings will be getting Cameron Dantzler back on that secondary, which should help minimize that. But looking at Cousins last week, he did not look good. Adam Thielen, seven targets, only two receptions. They will have to find that better chemistry like they did in week one. But Jonu Smith should get his this game as well. Looking at last week, the Vikings gave up over 100 yards to Mo Ali Cox, who is a gigantic man in his own right, but he looked to be open almost every play. So look for Jonu to have a big game. Corey Davis or A.J. Brown are going to be good. Ferkser could be in that. But the Minnesota Vikings, they're still trying to get Justin Jefferson going. And I think the secondary will be able to shut down Thielen, and they're going to have to go to a second option. So let's talk fantasy implications. I believe Cook's going to have a better game than Henry, personally. But I believe Ryan Tannehill is my streamer of the week. He should definitely get his. And he's just put on that amazing season that he had last year and carried it on to this year. And I think he's going to have three or four touchdowns again. And Jonu Smith, obviously, is going to be a good play. And then one of Corey Davis or A.J. Brown. If A.J. Brown plays, I'm going to play him. If he does not play, I'm going to play Corey Davis. On the other side, Adam Thielen, he's a smash play, always is, regardless of last week. And neither of these defense you want to play. The Minnesota Vikings are giving at 38 points per game compared to the 28 of the Titans. Neither are good, and I probably won't be playing them until they show me something. And hopefully they do that this week. So something both these teams need to work on as well is the penalties, specifically the pre-snap penalties as we look at the Tennessee Titans. There was a drive last week against the Jacksonville Jaguars where they had three false starts on the same drive. They still ended up converting, but it was the Jaguars. I can't look at somebody with an upper tier defense and think that's something that we're going to convert every time. It's something that Mike Vrabel will address, and he will get it fixed as he normally does. And I feel like it's something that the... Teams are adjusting to with not having fans in the stadium. The quarterbacks can really sell that pre-snap, and I think it will be improved, but it's something they still need to show us first. Both these teams need to improve their pass rushes as well. Phillip Rivers had a clean pocket almost all of game last week, as well as Gardner Minshew in that offensive line almost stymied the Tennessee Titans completely other than an intentional grounding call, which was their one sack of the day. But we saw Javon O'Clowney and Harold Landry on the field almost every play. Mike Rabel came out and said that was just the way it came. Uh, we should have Derek Robinson back, Derek Robertson back this week, as well as maybe Vic Beasley. I'm kind of holding my breath on that. He had two full participation practices last week, and he still didn't play. So we'll see if he's out there, but I'm not going to believe it until I see it. But... They were still getting out of their pass rushing lanes. Gardner would move to the left, he would move to the right, he'd get into that upper field, and then he would find a open receiver. They will have to improve on that. And then the one good play Giovanni Clowney had at that last drive, 
He was so offsides. I don't know how it was not called. Jacksonville Jaguars fans were pissed. You can see the pictures. He's way over by like half a yard. But we got given that play. We ended up winning the game. Which brings us to Steven Goskowski. He has won the, both of these games for us. Even though he was terrible in the first one, he still hit those game winners. And he seems to be kind of coming back. He looked better in game two. He still missed that extra point, which there's no excuse for that. Look for him to hopefully get a little bit better as the season progresses. And I'm hoping with that as he is coming back from injury. But he's still towards the end of his career more than likely. But there's going to be games where that doesn't go our way. So the Tennessee Titans are just going to have to improve all around if they want to win. But that brings me to my predictions for this game. I do have the Titans winning again. They're going to be at a 31-25. to 25. I think the Titans control the run game. They end the clock. Uh, Cook's going to get his. But I believe Kurt's cousin is going to be frustrated again. And Ryan Tannehill is going to find John New or Corey for another touchdown or two. And we'll end up winning this game going into week four and staying undefeated. There is only, I think, 11 undefeated teams currently left in the NFL. And I think we're going to be another one going into week three. But that is it for me today, guys. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Get put in for the Corey Davis jersey. we got another video coming out tomorrow and on Thursday and Friday. So hit that notification bell. That's it for me. I'm out.